Hi everyone. So, um, Aya asked me to give a quick explanation on how to do LaTeX templates and how to work with LaTeX files and create a LaTeX document. So, uh, for this 121 project that we're doing, uh, I'm just going to very quickly explain that uh, just to give you an idea of how to do it, and then you can go ahead and try and uh, make your documents look very nice and pretty. Now, um, what exactly am I talking about? What is a LaTeX document? So uh, LaTeX is like, a, let me just show you real quick uh, an example. So this is an editor that I use personally, and this is the report that I'm currently working on. So this is kind of what LaTeX looks like uh, right here. So. Uh, LaTeX is a markup language that is used to create PDF documents like this one. So here I'm using a template that was provided to me by Panas, and uh, they already wrote all of the styling stuff and all the stuff that's necessary to make it look nice and beautiful like this. So I just downloaded the template and then I uh, modifying it as I go and uh, typing in my stuff and uh, it's going to make really nice beautiful documents like this. Uh, you can go ahead and make uh, custom templates and and uh, and also your own personal documents, which I do. Uh, makes things look nice and professional, and uh, gives everything a um, nice little touch that uh, you just can't get with Word. Also, LaTeX is super robust. So if you're ever working on a document and you like move an image in your document in Word, you'll notice that a bunch of other stuff gets moved everywhere. And that's just because of the way that Word is built. It's not great for handling very large documents. And LaTeX will not do that. Uh, also, LaTeX has a bunch of other advantages, such as uh, having labels for equations, figures, and tables, uh, having very specific ways of making uh, references and citations. They even have um, a formatting for, uh, for bibliographies. And they're generated on their own and only generating those that uh, you have used. So here at the end of my document is my bibliography. And this was generated automatically. I don't have to do any of this. I just have to uh, use an online tool to get the file. And then I reference things. And I'll show you how to do that very quickly. So this is a personal uh, preference of mine to use this editor. Uh, I would recommend if you're starting out uh, to use uh, Overleaf. I use this editor because I write with LaTeX very often, and uh, I bought this editor personally. They, so here I'm just going to show you very quickly uh, three different options. So this is uh, TechPad, and uh, another option is Overleaf. So this one's online and it's free. You don't have to pay for it. You just have to make an account, and then you can use it. And finally, another one is uh, Visual Studio Code. So yeah, as you can see, I use that for programming, but um, here we're gonna use it for LaTeX. All you have to do is you have to open it like this, and then you go to uh, this extensions tab, and you just type LaTeX, and there you have it. So you just download this extension, enable it, and then you can write LaTeX and it'll compile for you. Uh, as you can see right here, that's what they're doing. So they have the PDF document on the side and they're writing LaTeX right here. Uh, so let's just do this very quickly with Overleaf since that's probably what you're going to end up using. So just go to your search engine of choice and, and type Panas uh, LaTeX template or whatever. You'll find this page. And on this page, all you have to do is you have to find the Overleaf section. And uh, this is the template that they're offering. So just click on that. It'll open this page for you. And uh, you can view the source or download the PDF, but uh, what we want to do here is open as a template. And it'll allow you to open, open the, uh, the template for you in uh, Overleaf. And let's just make that bigger. And we'll move this. OK. So basically what it's done is that uh, it imported the, all the necessary files for this template into Overleaf. And uh, this uh, document is made up of multiple different files. So for example, uh, there's this image right here that's in the uh, document. That image is uh, present in these files. I'm not sure which one it is. I think it's probably this one, frog.eps. 
So you can't view that because I don't have a viewer for that, but that's it. The main file is the panas uh, template uh, main.tech. And so what, uh, what you do is uh, the way that you write LaTeX is that, uh, for example, you have all these different parts to it. So first the document class, this is gonna state what kind of, what kind of document you're writing. Then uh, the template type, uh, this is for telling it uh, how to use the style sheets and stuff. Uh, finally, you have all these different parts to it. So like, for example, here you have author one, and the way that that is stipulated is by this tag right here, author. So you just change that. And one annoying thing about Overleaf is that it does not recompile by it itself. You have to either press command enter, or you have to click on this button right here. And uh, yeah, that's kind of annoying. So uh, actually you can do auto auto compile. So it will compile for you. And normally anytime that you make any changes. So let's try this. Let's see, uh, Derek again. Stop typing, and yeah, it's compiling. So, as you can see, I made those two changes, and they will reflect right here after the program is done compiling. And um, what we want to do now is we want to find all of the different parts of the document. So the significant statement, uh, this thing right here, that's uh, this blue box right here. And yes, it's out of order, but it is logical. So it's written in the way that. Uh, the document, uh, so it's written in the in a logical way so that things don't get in the way. So this is a significant statement that will go here and then the styles tell it to be specifically right here on the bottom right of the document. And this will not move. Uh, it's stipulated in the style sheet somewhere. So after that, you just have the actual document. So everything from here on is the actual uh, document right here, everything that you see here. So, uh, this is the abstract right here, and you could just modify that text and it will change this. Uh, here we go with the first paragraph uh, right here. So, drop cap and then the T, so that I'll make this nice big T letter for you. And uh, for example, let's uh, try doing some other things that you can't do with Word. Uh, one being making easy equations. So if you just go begin equation and it should autocomplete for you like that, and which is very nice. Uh, I don't know why it has these extra tags, but it does. So it autocompletes and then we just use a double dollar symbol and we write our equation between those two. Let's make a fraction. So fraction one over two, and then we just compile that. It takes a while. Yeah, it's bugging out. It does that sometimes, not sure why. Just recompile it. Normally it should be a fraction one over two. And uh, let's make this, let's give this a label for now while it's doing its own thing. So label, uh, labels are really nice because uh, you can reference them in the document and uh, you don't have to number anything manually. It'll all be done automatically. So for example, you can give this a random ass label doesn't have to be, it's arbitrary. So, you know, you just give it like ass or something and then kiss, and then you can reference this somewhere. So then this will be a reference to equation like this. And then you see C equation, equation, and then you don't even have to give it a number. You just go ref and then here we go. So these are all the different parts of the document that have references or labels on them that you can reference. And this is the one that we just created. So ref, ass, kiss, and that's totally arbitrary. You can name it whatever it is that you want. Uh, normally what I do is uh, all of my equations are ref, ek, so eq, colon, and then the name of the equation so I can actually recognize them when I'm typing. So just do that and then we'll recompile this. And uh, something is wrong. Let's see if we can fix this by getting rid of these dollar symbols. Hmm, okay, it's not liking that. Let's see, maybe the double spacing. So I'm just gonna recompile that again. Sometimes LaTeX can be a bit finicky. You just have to play with it. There we go. You have to play with it until it does what it is that you want it to do. Now, um, 
that's how you make an equation, so a simple fraction. And there's a whole language to this. You could find that online. Uh, just type in LaTeX math equations or something, and you'll find all the syntax so you can make uh, equations like this. And it makes really beautiful equations. Uh, it's much easier to do this. Trust me, it is much easier to do this than to try to use the equation builder in Word. That just takes up way too much time. So uh, that's uh, one tip for that. If you want to make a new paragraph, all you have to do is you have to leave an empty line, and then this will be a new paragraph like this, and you just compile that, and it should show up right here with an empty space, like that, see? And if you want to make some sections, you go section, and then this is, a, this is an amazing new section. There we go. And some text. And then just compile that. There we go, so some text. Notice that uh, this section is being numbered. The, all the other ones are not being numbered because they placed this star like this. So I just do that. And now it will get rid of that numbering. Uh, I would follow the template because that is what they're doing in this template. They have no numbers per section. So just do that for all your different sections. And um, if you wanna make a figure, for example, so uh, begin figure like that and then you can i don't know why it's doing that that's weird so then include graphics so then frog or something this is the document this is the one that they already have in there so then you know they already give you this label filled out and this caption and if you compile that it should have a frog show up right here or somewhere actually now that's actually one funny thing about um, latex is it'll do things like this to you sometimes you just have to play with it until it works. Like here, I probably did something wrong. This is probably my fault. Uh, I think what it is that we have to do is we have to make it uh, width is equal to something. Width is equal to line width. I think I think that's how you do it. I don't remember. Line width or column width. Let's do column width. Column width. I think that should work. Yeah, it really depends on the templates that you're using. So here, it'll probably tell you, the Lego must be a unit of measure. Yeah, so it has to do something with my uh, units of measures here, measurements, so that's not right. I don't really remember how to do this because uh, I have it done all for me automatically. So I use different macros and uh, snippets, and that's why I really like this editor. Uh, let me just show you that real quick. So in here, if I wanna make a figure, all I have to do is I have to come up here, snippets, and then just kick like all the figures that I want. So figure labeled, and then just have to fill this out. And it's super easy. So it was width, so it goes first. So first you put in the width of it, and then you put in where the image actually is saved. So yeah, just so you know. And um, that's that. Um, let's see what else. Do I, oh, right. This is a Zotero bib, so all you have to do here is you have to, you know, paste a URL or a title of a, an article that you're using, you click cite on here, and then it will make your citations for you automatically on nice and neat, but that's not what we want. We want, actually, we want the bib tech. So you click that and then it downloads for you, and then you just use that uh, right here. So all this stuff, we just copy that, and we paste it, uh, where is it, dot bib. So this is a sample bibliography that they made for you. So for example, when we're typing our document, uh, typing and reference is done like so. So then you go cite, and then it'll give you all of the ones that you're using. Now, again, I like my editor, again, personally more because it'll even give me a preview of the abstract um of the document that uh of the reference that i'm going to make so you just click that and then you compile it and it will do this for you let's see where it is so typing and a reference is done like so so here you go that's in the reference right there and uh it'll number it for you and it'll even make it show up for you like you want it you just have to define that up here somewhere 
Um, another thing, if you need tables in LaTeX, I recommend using tables generator. Just type this in Google and you'll find it or whatever search engine you use. I use DuckDuckGo, but whatever. And uh, click LaTeX tables. Uh, make your table here, or you can even paste your uh, paste your table data from Word or CSV or whatever. So just make that. Click generate, and then copy this code right here with this button, and then paste that in your document. And there you go, you're done. You've made a table. Do not do not try to make a table the manual way. It sucks. You know, you go begin tabular. It's just, it's horrible. It's a horrible experience. Don't do that. You'll waste your time. Just use tables generator. And um, so uh, I think I've pretty much covered everything. So uh, what is LaTeX? It's a markup language for making PDF documents. Uh, you have different tags. They're not really tags, but they're like syntax that you use in order to define different uh, parts of your document. There's a styling. So basically with this template, what we've done is we've downloaded a style sheet that we're using and uh, it's giving everything styling and colors and making it all beautiful like this for us. Uh, just delete all that, all those sections like this. You don't need this. Delete all this and type your stuff here. Okay. And uh, you'll get a nice new beautiful document. Uh, drop your images in here. Uh, so you upload stuff with this button for overleaf. You just upload all your images or whatever it is that you're working with here. And then you reference it in your document like I showed you before. Uh, use Zotero bib for bibliographies. And then just download the thing and uh, paste it inside your .bib right here. Uh, one last thing. There's this big draft thing on this document. It was really annoying to figure out how to get rid of that. Uh, so if I can show you how to do that um, very quickly. I think they use, yeah, here we go. So in this style sheet right here, panasa-new.cls, that's a style sheet. They use this package right here for the watermark. So we just go in here in this file, line 95, and we get rid of that. And then just recompile it, and it'll get rid of that stupid draft thing for you. And there you go. Now you have a nice, beautiful document. Uh, you've finished typing up your 121 report. You're going to get an excellent grade, and you're going to pass with flying colors. And uh, just if you have any questions on how this works, leave a comment or contact me. You'll see me tomorrow. So whatever, just ask me questions on this or whatever. I know that Daniel also is very good at LaTeX. Uh, he's even called him he's, he's even said that people call him the guru of latex so yeah just ask him questions as well if you want uh these are the basics uh, uh you can use any editor that you want uh, you just have to get it to compile uh and that's it so i'll see you guys tomorrow thank you